There's a lot of talk about net zero, but they're doing net zero too when you consider that all the good work on rolling out renewable energy batteries and solar and wind and hydro is being counteracted by the approval of new coal and gas projects. Now, if you haven't seen this chart yet, just check it out. That sharp jump in the red line shows record global temperatures this month. Sure, it's going to iron out over time to just, to just another mini bump in a future chart, but right now it looks like an ugly tipping point. It's just gone exponential. Meanwhile, Arctic ice is running the other way, melting south on the charts, smashing more records, melting at the North Pole, taking longer times to freeze in Antarctica, and El Nino is with us again. It's not a great prognosis. If you're looking, however, for a chart tracking the billions of dollars in new fossil fuel project approvals, apologies to Alice Cooper, but welcome to my nightmare. We've been trying to find out a reliable number for quite some time. Try calling the Environment Minister, you get the old run around there. Try the Resources Minister, you'll get a good stonewalling there. Try digging around NOPSEMA, that's the federal agency charged with permissions for offshore gas. Um, there's another regulator for onshore gas and there's the slew of state government agencies on top. It is a mess. Now, Labor is making strides on the rollout of renewable energy projects, but on fossil fuels, it's business as usual. They are talking net zero and doing net zero. Forking out still $1 billion a month in public subsidies, mostly for foreign fossil fuel multinational corporations. They're rolling out gas and coal like there's no tomorrow. They're trying to hide it. There's no place you can just look it up, as we said. And they're watching on as the states bring in ever more draconian laws to lock up peaceful climate protesters. They're watching on as fossil fuel companies rake in record profits and pay pocket fluff in tax. If you're liking the story so far, don't forget to support us on Patreon or like, comment and share. Thank you very much. The opposition, of course, is entirely devoid of policy. They don't do policy. They just say no to everything. But Peter Dutton has been pretending to have a policy. He's been creating actually a convenient distraction, talking about nuclear SMRs, that's small modular reactors. Now, there's no functioning SMR in the entire world, but that won't stop Peter and all the Sky News pundits continually hammering this convenient untruth. Let there be SMRs in the seat of Dixon. If Peter wants to have nuclear power, how are we ever going to pay for it? Because it's so expensive. Who is going to have it? in their electorate. So every day from the corporate media duopoly, we're being told we need to keep the Araring power station open. Reliable baseload power, they cry. As if old coal clunkers were reliable at all. They break down the whole time, they're dirty. They're not just unreliable, but with the price of thermal coal at US $145 a tonne, they're costly as well. Much more costly than solar. Undaunted. We hear we must keep Australia's biggest coal-fired power station belching away. That's erraring. But what we don't hear is how they're going to pay for it. Who's going to pay for it? We're going to pay for it. That must be surely the suggestion from the AFR, which has been writing a story a day, calling for erraring to remain open, even though Origin, Origin Energy, the owner, doesn't actually want it open. It wants it closed. It doesn't want to buy coal on the spot market. So the push is obviously to get us to fund Australia's biggest old coal fired power station. Tim Buckley from Climate Energy Finance is about to issue a report on the renewable energy targets and costs are raring conservatively. That is the cost of keeping it open at 200 to $400 million a year. Are we gonna be up for that? The operator origin wants it closed, but the finance press is demanding it be kept open at the expense, presumably, of taxpayers. Now, the state of misinformation in climate and energy is only matched by the state of confusion. The safeguard mechanism, complicated emissions schemes, but there's a lot of money to be made. The billionaire Mike Cannon-Brooks is up a couple of hundred million dollars on his investment in AGL when he tried to take AGL over and bought a stake. And there's the indefatigable wallet raiders from Macquarie Bank. They're sniffing around Energy Australia, reportedly chasing a 50% stake so that they can get a piece of your 50% rises in electricity bills. 
They're going up right as we speak. A lot of money to be made. The tax haven maestros from Brookfield, meanwhile, are bidding $20 billion to nab Origin Energy on the cheap and whisk it off to the Cayman Islands or to Bermuda. And here's Chris Bowen, meanwhile, promising 82% renewables by 2030. How he can get there, this is only a promise, it's not legislation. How he can get there remains a mystery, particularly if they keep a rowing open. But New South Wales surely won't make it any easier. How he can get there without laws, this is just a promise, remains a mystery, particularly if they shoehorn taxpayers into a massive subsidy to keep a roaring coal-fired power station open. Whatever the case, when Brookfield do get it, if they do get it, some people, some stockbrokers are saying it's too cheap, $8.90 a share, should be double that. It'll be a very nice earner for Brookfield shareholders in the Cayman Islands because Brookfield don't like paying tax. Thanks for your support. Like, share, comment in the section below.